welcome to video number five uh, this is going to cover cabinets or racks as uh, GLPI calls them R A C K racks or racks uh, okay let's go in there okay immediately as i log in i see the dashboard and what i want to do is go on to the one the tile that uh has 22 on it 22 racks because that's what i want to see and immediately you will see a list of all the racks that are in my infrastructure um, before i actually click on one just to see as an um, uh, example or to demonstrate I want to stress that it's very important to give your asset a descriptive name. It needs to be very logical and uh, it has to be very descriptive about where the asset is and what the asset is as well. For example, uh, how I've decided to name my asset is that you will see um, the name is two part. You'll see there's one part of the name and then a dash and then another part of the name. AC01 is the location or the name of the department or the name of the room where the asset is. So in other words, AC01, that's the account uh, department. Uh, and um, 01 basically means it's the first one, which means there could be account 02, another department or another floor or another section or another room. But this is AC01 and R1 specifically speaks to the uh, the first rack so r1 would be rack number one and then if there's two there will be rack number two rack number three and so forth so obviously it's very important that you also label these physical racks with those particular names so um yeah and then with as an extension to that if i have a switch i'm gonna add ws uh sorry sw1 for the first switch in that cabinet and then sw2 if there's another uh, switch so that will be my naming convention for whatever device is in there so it's very easy to look at the switch and be able to decipher where exactly the switch is without actually having to go down and, and, and trace it um, you know so as I log log in into my systems logically and I see them on my on my um, monitoring applications I can tell where they are so that's how important it is to have a good um, or a standardized naming convention. So it's very important so that before you actually set up your inventory system and your uh, monitoring system and your GLPI system, make sure that your assets, each and every asset that you are going to account for has a logical name, a standard name uh, that is relevant with everything else that's in the system all right okay let's go to dc01 that is in data center one and i've got rack one i've got rack two rack three and rack four all right i'm gonna go in there uh let's go to rack one and i'm going to get a presentation or a representation of the actual cabinet in itself all right um one thing i can do is i can uh just show the images i mean i can hide the images and just show a uh, just a, a representation of this this is nice if you don't actually have the images and you haven't actually gone as far as you know uh, uh giving that much detail to your devices but i prefer to have images you can hide the text uh, but obviously for me it works better if I have the text as well I'm able to see uh, these so obviously these labels you want to make these labels and stick them on the devices as well uh, to be able to know exactly what it is it's, it's uh, it makes a very good uh, documentation uh, practice all right okay there we go all right so um, yeah you will see here I've got a uh, 42 U or 42 unit um, cabinet and you can see the front and the rear of the cabinet so you'll ask yourself how did I actually get uh, the accurate you know representation of the devices like the pictures um, I'll show you exactly where you can actually define the parameters of the of the devices and you know the power usage 
uh, the depth of it, how many units it actually takes, uh, that you do under components. All right, uh, and then as you fill in that details, you will see here, if you slot the device in, it will basically uh, estimate how much space you are using. So if I put in a device that takes uh, two units, for example, with this uh, server, it will then uh, show you how much space is taken up or how much space is basically free. Same thing with the weight a, uh, as part of the description or the definition of the device itself. I can put in the weight, the power consumption and other attributes like uh, product, uh, you know, product codes, uh, how many uh, power supplies it have and uh, and so forth. So based on that information, once I slot it in, it will automatically calculate how much power consumption it is and then it will sum it up and shows you the total consumption of all the devices that are in here. Uh, same as the weight, it will add all the devices in your weight so you know how much it weighs. It also gives you a window of um, a quick view or quick glance or the ability to be able to respond. If someone says, hey, I need this device uh, slotted into the data center in there, can you find me a cabinet that has space? It's a 3U um, a device, so I'm gonna need three units to basically put it in. It's easy to tell and easy to, without actually having to go into the server room. You'll be able to tell, um, you know, if it's got space and how much weight it has and how much consumption it has or how many power slots are still available. So that's just one of the things that you can um, do. All right, uh, you'll see this is, I'm just toggling the view. All right, and then you have uh, impact analysis. Impact analysis is where you can actually uh, link this rack to another rack that uh, links to it so that if there's a problem, it's easy to pick up that what other dependencies are going to fail if this one fails. Uh, management. Management is very important if you have, uh, you enable uh, things such as uh, life cycle management. If you want to calculate depreciation and you want to keep all that intricate information about what, how much it cost, when it was ordered, the order number, the invoice number, and all of that information, you can tie all that information to the asset. Uh, you can have as much information as you want with the asset. And the nice thing about it is all you have to do is go to the asset and you get all that information. All right, and then you get contracts as well. If you have a contract with a supplier, you can actually add, um, you know, the contract and attach it there. And then you can get documents as well. If you have documents like manuals, you can also stick them in there. Basically everything to do with this asset, you can actually store it in there. All you have to do is go to the asset and all that information is there. So you no longer have all your information scattered around your infrastructure, not knowing where to find what. So all of that stuff is there. That's why it's easier to actually put in all that depreciation and warranties. It's easy to track all of that. And then you can set reminders that will tell you about all of these things expiring and uh, all that good stuff. Uh, it's amazing that this application or this software is free. All right, tickets as well. If there are tickets locked uh, and you, you know, you reference this asset, the tickets will always appear there. So it's good to actually have a trace of history of what was done or what tickets were actually locked on. Problems as well, if there were problems uh, picked up on the system, those will also appear. And then changes as well will also be listed there. Historical, this is more like a log of what has happened. You know, any changes that happened to this rack will be listed there. So this will be listed in there automatically. All right, um, I think that's about it, but maybe one thing I just need to show you is how to define a, uh, let's say a device, right? Uh, for example, let's let's go into this, uh, so components. All right, if I go to computers, uh, sorry, let's go back. as uh, components all right if i go to setup uh, you will see basically this is where i can actually change or define 
um, you know, asset types and asset labels and so forth. So if I go to computer models, this is where I can define models. Uh, this is all the models that are pulled in by the inventory systems and the ones that I can actually define or if there's information I want to get in, I can add in there. So let's look at uh, that particular server that we were looking at. I think it is a Dell and it's a power edge i think it's a 740. all right you will see here in order for it to be um you know to have a visual representation of it i actually downloaded this front um you just find a picture you download it and you just make sure that you crop it nicely and you put it as a front and the back you do the same and then uh you specify the weight you can find all of this information on the internet the product uh, number uh, the required units as well if you've got a uh, the product page of um, Dell's website will give you all of this information the depth the power connections uh, power consumption 750 so if you slot it in there it's gonna add 750 to the total power consumption of the cabinet this happens also with um, with the weight uh, if you slot it in there automatically the weight will be calculated so that is um, Rex in a nutshell so you'll see this software is very powerful and it's free amazing I'll see you on the next uh, video um, so this was about cabinets or Rex as GLPI represent, um, refers to it but thank you very much uh, for tuning thus far Hopefully this will be uh, very useful. Cheers.